Hi guys, it's Scott here again, and this is the third dimension video. In this video, we're going to look at the first five out of ten rules that we're going to give you for the best practices when you're dimensioning your drawings. So the first rule or recommendation that we'd like to give you is to always try and place your functional dimensions first. Your functional dimensions are those that are critical to, to the way that the part or the assembly is going to work. And so if these aren't right or if these aren't clear, then your part or that assembly may not work properly. Because these dimensions are critical to the way the part is going to function or the assembly is going to function, then these dimensions usually also carry the smallest tolerances. And tolerances are something that we'll learn about in, in later videos. Rule number two is that we need to completely dimension the drawing, as I just mentioned. So it's not enough to draw everything nicely to scale, put a few of the functional dimensions on, and then expect the person manufacturing the part to figure out the rest or measure things off the drawing. We have to fully define uh, the drawing so that there is only one unique solution uh, to all the information that we've given. And we also need to be able to put all these dimensions and relationships into CAD and have that give us a fully defined CAD part so that if we later go and change one of these dimensions, our CAD part will update in the appropriate way uh, that we want it to. We also want to avoid repetition wherever possible so that our drawing is nice and neat and clear and easy to read. Looking at this drawing here, we've got pretty much all the dimensions we need currently to define this view, but we've got no idea how thick uh, this part should be. So you could say that we're actually missing an additional view here where it shows the thickness of the part. That would be one way to make this drawing fully defined. Another way, um, which is less common, is to have a call out onto the part and say, 10 thick, that is a convention that we can use, uh, but is quite uncommon to use within the Australian standard. So before we leave a drawing or hand it off to someone to manufacture or to check, we want to check over it to make sure that we've, we've got every single dimension that we actually need there to define it uniquely. The other thing we should keep in mind is we should definitely not repeat a dimension. Repeating a dimension is almost as bad as missing a dimension. Each dimension should only appear once in a drawing, and it is not helpful to put uh, dimensions on multiple views just in case you think that someone might not see it. You should arrange them so that it is most convenient for people to, to view and interpret your drawing without using any repetition. The problem can come from if you repeat a, a dimension and someone comes along later and wants to change the design slightly, maybe they will change one of the dimensions and then your drawing will be inconsistent because you've got two different dimensions on the drawing for the same thing. Also, CAD systems don't like it when you try to tell them that two things um, should be different lengths. They'll get very upset and, and not work for you. And they also don't like it when you tell them twice that something is the same length. Uh, that also upsets them, so please try and avoid that. In this case here, you might think it might be handy to put a 40 down here, but we can see that there is a 40 dimension already there, and so that would be over-dimensioning our drawing. We wouldn't want to do that. Another way to simplify this drawing may be to use a square dimension symbol there, so that we can get rid of this 40 down the other end. So that's simplified it slightly. Another option that we have is not actually specifying this, these dimensions on the drawing, but down below where we specify the material, we can say that this is square 40 millimeters mild steel. And that way we can remove another dimension. This is something that you're able to do. We wouldn't typically go and add a 25 millimeter here because as we've learned previously, we've got our symmetry line running across our part and we know that this is 50 millimeters between these two holes. So, and this crosses both lines. So we would assume that these holes are equally spaced on the center of the part. Currently, we've only indicated the hole, um, this diameter of 12 size on one of these holes. We haven't really said what the other hole is. So it would actually be better to indicate that we've got two of these diameter 12 holes. And we also have the option of using this particular symbol, this arrow pointing down with the bar on top of it. 
and that is a way to indicate depth when you're referring to one of your holes. So if we do that in the callout for the holes, then we don't need that one there, and we also don't need this depth dimension in the other view. So we can get rid of those, and we wouldn't consider this two that we're using here a repeat of that dimension because we're referring to two different holes that we're dimensioning. We also have the option at this point of maybe completely eliminating this view altogether and just having the single view. There is enough information on this to tell us that this is a piece of square 40 mil mild steel. We know the location of the holes and we also know the depth of them. So we could potentially get rid of that altogether. So rule number four is not to over dimension. If you can figure out what a dimension is based on other dimensions and relationships provided in the drawing, then you shouldn't provide an extra dimension. So in this case, we've taken a similar example, but this time we've moved the hole a little bit off um, both of these horizontal and vertical alignments. It's no longer a symmetrical part. So if we were to dimension these hole locations, it would be uh, best to do it by dimensioning from this edge. So 25 in for the first hole, and then it might be a distance of 57 horizontally from that first hole center point across to the second hole. And if we were to put 18 millimeters on the end, then we've gone and overdimensioned it. If you add all of these up, you'll find that it equals 100. And so together, taken together, this is overdimensioned. We don't need that last 18. We could take off any one of these three dimensions and that would be properly dimensioned again. So when you have the choice of this, have a think about what, which dimensions are gonna be most useful for the person who's manufacturing your part. So we can take that one off. In this case, we've got the center line of our part here and we haven't extended it over uh, this edge line here. So we haven't indicated that it is actually in the center of the part, in which case we would have to add another 20 mil dimension here. That's okay. When you have things that are not symmetrical like this hole here, it's safer to indicate that this one is actually at 20 rather than relying on people to to assume that you've done a proper job of this that crossing over this line means that it's in the middle so if things are a bit skewed on the other side or on the side of caution then to provide the position of this hole we could have the choice of uh, referencing it based on this one and say eight millimeters vertically up from that or we could come down from that top edge and say 12. However, we wouldn't do both of these because only one of them is required to, to uniquely uh, define the part. Having both would be overdimensioning. And once again, this whole view is potentially eliminated because we've managed to put all the information required to define this part into the view over here. So we don't really need to show this one. And where possible, if we don't need to show it, then you should save yourself the time and effort and not show it. Check, check, check. Rule number five states that you should try and place your dimensions where they're most easily found and where they're relating to and relevant to the features that you're dimensioning. So in these three views of this object that we've got here, all the dimensions are currently in pretty good positions, but I'm gonna demonstrate some ways that you could really annoy the person trying to read your drawing and manufacture this part if you put them in different positions to where they are currently. So let's take a look at this view down here. So currently we only need this one view to show the position of these two holes. We have a distance coming up from the bottom to locate the height of these holes. We have a call out showing, a leader showing the diameter, and then we have two horizontal dimensions here to show us where the centers are. So just looking at this one view, we have all the information and dimensions we need to be able to go and drill these two holes. It would be really annoying if instead of having this dimension here, we moved it over to this view where it's a little bit harder for us to find. And so when we come to drill these holes, we have to look backwards and forwards and there's increased potential to get the dimension wrong and drill these holes in the wrong place. So we wouldn't want to do that typically. 
likewise we wouldn't want to remove this dimension here and put it on this other view up here because once again we're spreading the dimensions we need for these holes over multiple views and it's harder for us to hold them all in our head at the one time. So that would be a bad way to do it.